My name is David Fleischman and I'm standing in front of the marker honoring the Blues Foundation and uh, we are here to talk about the blues and music and the opening of the foundation which is coming up on May the 8th. Uh, I was born right here in Memphis, Tennessee, went to school here, uh, played music for 12 years, way back when, and then in 1974, I uh, went to work for Atlantic Records, and I've been in the record business uh, ever since. Worked for MCA Records, uh, Atlantic for 17 years, MCA for seven, then we came back to Memphis in 2004, and uh, I am now in the management business. I manage some recording and touring artists. So I, I had been playing music for uh, about two years when I went to my first concert, which was at the old Ellis Auditorium, which is now the, the Cannon Center. And uh, I went to the first concert I'd always played for and been to, dances. And this was the first concert where I bought a ticket and went and sat with people. And this was in 1963. This was before the Civil Rights Act. So, uh, you know, everything was segregated in those days. Black folks had to go sit upstairs in the balcony and all that foolishness. Uh, and although there was no term at the time, if there was, this would have been considered a black show. And so I went in and I sat, it was overwhelmingly, predominantly African-American audience. Uh, and it was, it was a, a reviewed uh, Garnett Mim, Solomon Burke, the Chiffons, the Orlans, and James. And we had been doing music by black artists, but you didn't look at it in those terms. It was just music uh, uh, that we played. And James was young when he, when he was the headliner. He came out, you know, he was young. His band was just incredible. And then when he did Please Please, and everybody's seen it, videos, I'm sure, where he goes on it. They put the cape on him and he throws the cape off and keeps on singing. Well, when he did that, the people in the audience got up and rushed the stage, which I'd never seen anything like that before. But that was the moment when I understood the power of music. And uh, I thought to myself, that's what I want to do. And it sort of changed how I looked at everything and how I did things. And I always had that in my mind. Well, as I said, I had worked for both Atlantic Records and MCA Records. And both labels, Atlantic, we had tons of blues and R&B. And then when I worked for MCA, we had all of the chess records, which are all, you know, all of those great artists. And, and plus playing music and being from Memphis, I, I had sort of a natural affinity uh, for the blues and for soul music and R&B. Uh, and then when we moved back to town, I, uh, I was asked to judge uh, the International Blues Challenge, which I was more than happy to do, and I've done that for I guess the last six, seven years maybe, and it's uh, it's an unbelievable event. Number one, it's great for the city. It shows our international. You know, we're looked at as an international music town all over the world. Memphis still has that cachet of being the home of great music, and you know we are the uh, the home of the blues and birthplace of rock and roll and the cradle of soul. So. It just was a sort of a natural thing. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I've gotten into the management business, and I had joined, um, became a member of the Blues Foundation, and tremendously excited about the opening of the Blues Hall of Fame because it's something that is right, something that is needed, and no better place in the world to have it than on South Main in Memphis, Tennessee. A number of years ago, I was at a uh, radio and records convention in Boulder, Colorado, and there were two venues where people played. Uh, uh, they were about a half a block apart. Uh, so I went and I saw this band from England, and I thought to myself, looking at them, I said, boy, they sure look young. And at some point, the guy in the band said, hey, I can't go to this other venue to hang with you guys because I'm not old enough. And they were really, really good in my opinion, and I went up and introduce myself to the uh, to the band leader afterwards told him how much I, I love their music and he asked me are you with the convention and I said yes I am and he said are you a record guy or a radio person and I said I'm a record guy and he asked me where I was from and I said I'm from Memphis and this young kid his eyes got big as silver dollars and I mean he just you know Memphis it's there's a young kid from England 
And he was just, like I said, so moved physically. I mean, his eyes literally got big. And we talked for a while. So that cachet is still here. Uh, and I think it always will be. I don't know if it's the water, the mud, the river, the air, whatever it is, it's here. What happens here musically, I've been blessed and fortunate to be all over this country, everywhere. This doesn't happen in, in Boise, and it doesn't happen in Fort Lauderdale, and it doesn't happen in you know Albuquerque, and it doesn't happen in all of these places, but it happens right here in Memphis, Tennessee.